Well, good morning. I'm Chris. I am a uh, retired business person that just loves science. And I want you to share some of this science with me. I've been doing this for a long time for a lot of kids. And I love it. It's fascinating. And I think you'll enjoy it too. Can you tell me what a macroinvertebrate is? Any ideas? Macro means big. But in this case, it means big enough that I can see it without a microscope. Invertebrate means it has no spine. So we're talking about creatures that don't have any bones. Their, their skeleton is on the outside. Makes them kind of crunchy if you are hungry. Also, we're talking about worms. There's... Um, a macroinvertebrate I know that you're familiar with. It's a crawdad or a crab or a clam. They've got a hard shell. But these little bugs have, um, most of them have a, kind of a, almost a fingernail type shell around them. The habitat. We're talking about aquatic macroinvertebrates today. So the habitat is ponds, streams, lakes, sometimes puddles. You getting the idea? They can live in any kind of water that's healthy. And they like to live in the, um, between the rocks. And sometimes you'll find them in the mud and the moss and very often under the leaves and clinging to the leaves. There are all kinds of macroinvertebrates. There are several dozen here in the Pacific Northwest, and each of those types has a family of 50 to hundreds of different varieties. They're incredible creatures, and they're all over the place. Life stages. Like all other animals, they start out as an egg, and if you can see the little spots here, these are the eggs that are going down into the water. And they'll spend a few weeks like that. And then they will hatch into a nymph. This is called metamorphosis. Meta is uh, chain, uh, width and morphos is shape. They're changing their shape. And so you'll see that they, they live like this for a year in the water, eating what they eat, and then they change their shape into an emerger. I'm showing you a picture of the mayfly right now. The stoneflies are very similar, and most of the other bugs are also similar. Some of them have a fourth stage, which is a pupa, which is a little worm in the case. But most of these have three stages of metamorphosis. In sci-fi, we call that shape shifting. And I'm going to refer to sci-fi a lot because an awful lot of Hollywood has taken on these bugs, imitates them. The next stage, after they emerge, they come up to the surface of the water and they try to get through and they can't. And some of them will stick up a siphon and suck up some air. Some of them will have fluid inside their bodies which they use to expand out their body, their shell. And it's kind of like Superman in a phone booth. He runs into the phone booth. You see him rip open his civilian suit and spin around, and he jumps out with his Superman suit on. He goes up, up, and away and flies off. And that's what these bugs do. They fly off. They find nearby vegetation, and they find a mate. And then the female comes down close to the water and drops her eggs in the water. And then she dies. And the male has already died. Um, in this case, the mayfly does not have a mouth when it becomes an adult. And so they don't last very long, a day or two. By that time, they're probably a year old. Stoneflies get to live two or three years underwater. 
and some of the beetles do, and they grow and a stone fly can actually be this big. And they're kind of like a grasshopper when they're big. Mayflies are easy to spot. As a nymph, they have three tails. Go like that and make an M, and it's a mayfly. You can identify a, identify a stone fly because they have two tails. And most of the beetles don't have a tail. Okay, let's take a look at what these little creatures eat. There's all kinds of them, and they live in different habitats, they look different, and they eat different things. Some of them are shredders. The vegeta vegetarian bugs are shredders, and they'll take little bits of leaf and plant material and pretty much take that home for dinner, take it down to their hiding spot. Others are gatherers, and they'll go around the stream and pick up little bits. And then there's also scrapers. These leaves and the, the rocks that are out there and the pieces of wood will grow algae. And some of these bugs harvest the algae by scraping it off with their mouth parts and eating it. There's one more kind, well also they, they'll also eat the uh, dead salmon that are in the river. There's one more kind. Who likes hamburgers? And chicken nuggets. Oh, there's somebody. Okay. So you're a carnivore. You eat meat. And a lot of these bugs are carnivores and they eat other bugs. And they're easy to recognize because they have mandibles in front of their mouth where they'll grab their prey and bring it in and chomp on it. And the dragonfly is actually the most voracious bug eater that there is. Even after they become an adult, they keep their mouth parts and they fly around and capture other bugs that are flying. Why do we care about macroinvertebrates? Because they're cute? Not really. Because they're interesting? Yeah. But there's three main reasons that we really are concerned about macroinvertebrates. The first one, and your teacher's probably going to want to know this on a test. The first one is that they are bioindicators. A bioindicator tells me the health of the stream. Who is allergic to something? Anybody? Poison oak? Uh, pollen? Homework. Who's allergic to homework? Anybody? Being allergic means you don't tolerate something. If you, if you have the sneezes or hives or something, you can't tolerate it. Well, insects, water insects, do not tolerate bad water conditions. And you learned in water quality that there are bad water conditions. It can be too warm. It can be polluted. It can have not enough oxygen and it can have too much silt in it. You learned about those things because they affect the fish and they affect the insects. Okay, reason number two. When you get to biology, you will find that the little egg hatches and there's a fish that comes out of it, but it keeps the yolk sac underneath in its belly and it lives off of that yolk sac for a few days or a week or two and then what once the yolk sac is gone it's time for this bug to die or this fish to die or else it has to start eating something in this case they start eating bugs the bugs will make these little fish that have just hatched grow and grow and grow until they're big enough to go down to the ocean plus all of the other fish that are in here will also eat them. So they're kind of the base of the food system. Number three, they dispose of the leaves and the dead material, plant material and the salmon that are in the stream. What happens if these things sit there in the stream and rot? 
and fall apart. They contribute to turbidity. How about acid in the, in the water? And bacteria that you may not want in the water if they're just sitting there rotting. So for these bugs to come along and eat them means that they clean the stream. So what's important for you to know is we care about macroinvertebrates because they are bioindicators. They tell us the health of the stream. They feed the baby fish, extremely important. And they also clean the stream up. Okay, we talked about briefly about being allergic. Some of these insects are super sensitive and they cannot stand bad conditions. And then there's some that just don't care. The ones that are super sensitive would be the mayflies, most of the stone flies. Everything else is medium to very tolerant of bad water conditions. That would be the beetles, the worms, mosquitoes, water skippers that go across the surface, back swimmers that have little, they're a beetle with oars for paddles. Those things don't care too much. If I go out and I sample with my net the insects that are in the stream, and I find no mayflies, maybe no stoneflies, that tells me something's wrong with the stream. Could be pollution. If you look behind me, you'll see we're in a wide open spot. It's had hot summer sun all summer long. I did not find any mayflies here. I had to go upstream this morning where the trees are overhanging and keeping the water cool. And that's where I found the bugs that I've got for you to look at. Invasive species. There are a lot of creatures that eat these bugs besides um, uh, the, the baby fish. One is a stone, is a uh, bullfrog. Bullfrogs do not belong here. There are goldfish that people put into lakes and ponds when they're tired of feeding them and they eat all the food that the trout would normally eat and the baby salmon. That's not good. So don't put your goldfish in the pond. Let's take a look at what I found in the river this morning. I went out with my net and I collected all of this gunk and there were little bugs inside of it. The first one we're going to show you a close-up of is a mayfly. Remember, they have three tails and they have little gills on the side, how they breathe. Next one will be a stonefly. It has two tails and they're pretty much bigger than the mayflies. The one you're going to get a close-up of is a yellow stone. And there's quite a few of them. You'll see they're very vigorous and they move around a lot. Most of their gills are on their abdomen. And then the third one you're going to see is a water penny. And I don't see them very often. They're a tiny little round black creature that zigs around, very active. And they're related to skippers and, and the beetles. And then the fourth one you're going to see is the uh, caddis fly. This happens to be the fall caddis, and it makes a case for itself out of little tiny pieces of rock, grains of sand, glues them together, and then filters out diatoms and microscopic things for its dinner. There's another kind of caddis that takes pine needles and little bits of debris like this and makes its case. Often they're called a periwinkle. And that's about it for the bugs. The next thing is, how do I find the bugs? I got them in here, of course. But um, I have my waders on, you might have noticed. I go out in the water where there's no salmon spawning. And I take this very fine net. I get 
the net downstream in the current and they kick over the rocks because that's where the bugs are hiding. In the rocks and the leaves and I scoop them up and I bring them over and I put them in the net in the tub for you to look at. And that's all there is about mic macroinvertebrates right now. Thank mm -hmm. you.